So, uh, Disability and Game of Thrones and Song of Ice and Fire arguably is one of the best shows for how they represent it. It is amazing. And whether, you know, some of you might be here because you actually have a disability, maybe you have family that has it, friends, someone. I personally grew up with a first cousin who had San Filippo, which if you don't know what that is, you have all your abilities to walk, talk, and then as you get older, you slowly, those abilities get taken from you, so you're not able to walk, you can't feed yourself, and so on. I have autoimmune diseases that make life not comfortable on a daily basis. So for me, it was very important because I grew up watching my first cousin, who was my brother, he lived less than a half mile, he was like a brother, uh, he lived with us for a time, I saw how people treated him and looked at him for having something that he had no control over. You know, I just remember one time pushing him in the wheelchair because he could no longer do it, and a woman just the entire time stared, and she did this, and just watched. And it was one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had. Even now, gosh, 10, oh no, he was when I was 16. Oh, I'm not gonna age myself, never mind. Okay, 10 -ish years <laughs> passed. But how it's represented in Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire, we see certain tropes that the disabled generally are given that they aren't given in this show. If you see a lot of shows, one, either they don't have the disabled character. You know, if you look at Lord of the Rings, how is it they go on this epic quest and no one has an injury, no one has a disability, no one has a mental or physical, are you kidding me? You know, orcs and... I got spiders and stuff, something, something, but they, they walk away from it on skate. And that's, that's just not normal. That's not to be expected. And George takes that and he shows us very clearly, and they do it so well in the show, they stay true to it. There is a thin line between being completely abled and something happening. And we see that with Jamie. I mean, one of the <coughs> best swordsmen. And it just <coughs> took one moment for him to be changed. And George is so good, I would say, in a series, you usually don't see this many disabled characters. We have Bran, who gets paralyzed from the waist down. We have Theon, that has mental and physical disabilities after he's tortured. Um, we have Tyrion, who not necessarily dwarfism is considered, you know, they go back and forth on that, whether it is, but the issues caused from it. You know, we have so many, we have Willis, Tyrell, and just all these characters. And normally you see, what I love about, I'm going to ramble a little bit, I will take questions too if you're thinking, man, she's just going to gap the entire time. <laughs> what I love about it is, and normally in shows, the disabled person is usually used as, one, either a sacrifice for the hero. They're either used to motivate, showing you how you're not living your life right, because, oh, look, you could be me. And they don't represent everyday people. Having a disability doesn't mean, this is gonna sound like a lecture for a second, sorry. Uh, having a disability doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be a superhero or you become a superhero in the stories. But what George shows, and Dan and David have been true to that, that people with disabilities are like everyone else. You just have something a little bit different about you. And that's huge. They are deeply, deeply complex characters. They're not a one note. They're not there to be a sacrifice for the able-bodied person. They're, they're not there to show you how you're squandering your life. They're, they're people, they're not lessons. And it is amazing to me that you have people, look at Tyrion. How often, how many shows can you think of where there's someone with a disability, mental or physical, and they are shown as being a sexual being? He's going around sleeping with people, he's in wine. That's amazing, you don't see that. How many people here is Tyrion one of your favorite characters? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that is actually right. Because he, yeah. he knows things. Yeah, yeah. And he drinks and he knows things. That's, that's why I love him. And. Half man. He's a Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and someone like Tyrion isn't, I mean, even if you look at dwarfism in movies and shows, they're usually the butt of jokes, you know? But they, they don't do that with Tyrion. Tyrion has just all this range of emotions. He's intelligent, you know? People try to bring him down, and that's another thing. We usually don't see, because I mean, we don't want to be told we're bad people. So a lot of times, 
They don't use the voice to say, society doesn't treat people with disabilities how they should. There's a lot of ableism. And Tyrion is a voice where he's still a person, but he's able to say, this isn't right. He takes what's being thrown at him and accurately throws it back at society. And, and George is poking at us, absolutely. George is saying, this is, this is wrong. And you just, you don't see that in a lot of shows. So George is just, what he's done to me is, is groundbreaking. Now, I want to move on to how they're actually viewed in the books, unless someone has a question on this part. Now you're like, gosh, she's just rambling, she's just rambling. Um, so if we look in the books, does anyone remember what was said about Bran after he had his fall and he became crippled from the waist down? Do you remember? Oh, you're not, so I'm going to put you on the spot. No, because you're hiding. Give him the gift of mercy? Yeah, give him the gift of mercy. It is so unthinkable that he could have any life beyond that. We have Robert Baratheon who says that I, I would, it, I'd kill myself. You know, it would be better to kill him to that extent. Jamie says it though, of course, Jamie has some motive behind that. Even the Stark's own bannermen, when they show up at Winterfell, they see within earshot of him, oh, he's too craven to take his life. That, that's insane. You're, you're saying it, it's better to be dead than to live on being disabled. So, you know, we see through Bran how disabilities are seen. If you can no longer walk or you're fully abled, you are a burden. And there's also a difference between, you know, the upper class and the small folk, which we'll get to. And then we move on and we see the same thing with Tyrion. When he was born, because he was born looking different, instantly rumors are started that he's this monster. People consider it an insult that the lord of a very powerful and rich house is offering his son up to be wed because he's different. But Tyrion in every way, he's intelligent, he's mostly kind, he has his moments. Um, there's no reason why it should be seen that way, but in, in that world it does. And, you know, we can move on to Theon. His own dad, well, you know, you're changed now, you're of no use, you can't produce air, so you're dead to me. Because he's missing a part of his body. So, George shows us over and over again the negativity there. But what we also see are these amazing examples of people having disabilities and rising above it. So Bran, has a disability, and yeah, he's angry for a little bit. If you're a kid and you can't run around anymore, if you have an accident all of a sudden, you're gonna be angry. I was, I was angry every time there was something new that came up health-wise, that's, that's normal to be angry. But he's not a point of pity. You know, at no point do you feel bad for Bran because he has his agency. He keeps pushing forward, and we're shown that Bran does some pretty messed up stuff. I mean, he does. And, one of my dislikes of Bran is the fact that there's another individual that has a disability, Hodor, and he takes advantage of him, which is pretty intense when you think about it because they, they show it in the show, but the books especially, when Bran goes to warg into him, he goes into a hole in his mind and he hides in the deepest place where Bran can't find him. It's just, it's, it's so awful. But with Bran, he's not a point of pity. George doesn't do that. He shows that he's still a person. He still has dreams. He still becomes powerful. And he would have became powerful whether he had that fall or not. So it's not the hero trope of, oh, you became disabled because you were destined for greater things. And we see that with Jamie. When he has his hand cut off, it's right hand actually, and he can no longer be the swordsman, we see in a lot of stories when that happens, someone becomes disabled, all of a sudden, they get this god tier power. They become amazing in some way. And George went, no. Something changed. He, he can still live his life, but he sucks. With that left hand, man, he sucks. And he knows he sucks. <laughs> but you don't get that normally in stories. You become disabled, and then all of a sudden, it's, oh, you know, it was for, it was for a reason, a divine purpose. And now, it's, no, shit happens. Sometimes you're driving, you get in a car accident. Sometimes you're born and there's a little genetic defect that's life, but you still go on and you still live. And sometimes you gotta adjust your life, but you're still a person completely. And then we also see different things like Willis Tyrell. He had a bad accident while jousting from Oberyn and he has a busted leg, so now his leg is crippled. 
And he's still the heir of High Garden. He's intelligent, he breeds animals, he's compassionate. So he goes on to do so much. Now where this gets flipped a little bit, because you're thinking, yeah, they have a bad stigma in the Seven Kingdoms and throughout there, but then they're still doing good. Where it gets bad is if you are a small folk. If you're a small folk, you might be left out to die if you have a disability. You know, I can't support you. I can, I'm having kids to support me. You know, I can't be taking on. So there definitely is, I think Tyrion said it best. If you're gonna be a cripple, it's better to be a rich cripple. So definitely, even though we see this goodness or this ability of George to show that you still have life after disability, there's the harsh reality of small folk don't have that chance necessarily. There's very few examples of someone that is part of the small folk, the lower class, that has a disability and keeps going on. But that's more realism towards the times that they're in, more so than George making a statement of, you know, <laughs> game over, man. So, any questions so far? I'm used to my panels being so much more uh, interactive. I feel like I'm just, please, oh. I wonder, oh, I wonder oh. if it's intentional that all of the disabled people are male and how different it would be if those same, if, if there were a disabled female. Police. I think the story would be very different in that time. Well, we do, like Shireen had a disease that caused disfigurement and could very well kill her later in life if it comes back. And they use her as an insult all the time to Stannis. You know, this little girl oh, that's true. who did nothing. Well, that's an insult. Oh, you deserved it. Um, Let's see, we have people that have mental, definitely females that have some mental impairments. And there's Liza. Yeah, Liza definitely, yeah. There's, there's okay. a lot of stuff going on with her, though. Point well taken. Yeah. Oh, there were both two Lollies. Um, Lady Tanda's daughter. Yeah. The who, I'm sorry. Lady Tanda's daughter, Lollies. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's disabled as well. Exactly, and, but we notice that they're part of the, the upper class. So it's yeah. it's more okay, but if you're the well, if you're the lower class, things are not going to be going well for you. I think being uh, being lowborn yourself is a handicap because if you pay attention, if I don't know if everybody remembers show wise when Arya and the Hound um, took shelter in uh, the oh yeah I don't know if he was a farmer oh, or whatever yeah. Yeah. It was him and his daughter and he made the soup or whatever yeah he told Arya like listen we're gonna, you know he was robbing him and Arya came and kind of tried to save him or whatever. And he told Arya, like, winter's coming. There's only two of them. He's a weak man. Somebody's going to do it. I know how the world works. Mm -hmm. So I think he kind of sets that tone that, you know, you don't really have much out there if you're lowborn. So he, he sets that tone pretty much through the whole book. And the Sand Sandor started as lowborn. Yeah. You know? yeah. And he himself is disfigured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, you know, he. he he kind of points that out, you know, from the beginning to the end. Let you know the if you're a lord, like Bran, for instance, Bran has the attitude of a lord. Even when he holds court, when he's holding court, he's very active at holding court. Pycelle has to calm him down sometimes, like relax. <laughs> Dial you know? it back. You're at a ten. Yeah. Take you're down to a five. So, you know, it does have something to do. I think being lowborn, you're kind of handicapped regardless. If you don't have a big giant family, which nobody really does. You're either gonna get robbed, winter's coming, you're gonna get your crops stolen. Um, the the guards might be about, you know, uh, uh, securing the town. They might rob you or go in and pillage your, your house and take your food and stuff. So that's the handicap itself. Well, you know how we treat it, um, I say we, but I'm saying the human race in general, not like pointing out you dirty Europeans or anything. <laughs> um, in medieval times, we did, we taught them well, I can't say them. I say lower class. I have no idea if I was part of the upper or lower. I would imagine not Dis distant ancestors that they were lesser. If you're not part of the noble class or the upper class, you were told that you're not as smart. You were treated that way. You're not as attractive. You don't have as much going for you. And that was very much so embedded in society. It was to control them because you don't want them reading. You don't want them learning because if they do, they can possibly go, wait a second. Why am I doing this? And then, and then rise up. And they also create a very harsh environment where, yeah, if someone has a disability or fully can't work, 
you don't have the luxury of taking care of them. You're weak. Someone's going to go along and they're going to either screw you over or you're going to be screwed over yourself. So, yes, I like to use the flower. I have two points. Firstly, um, responding to the intersection of, of ableism and classism, I think that's, that's a, an, an interesting dynamic and it kind of sounds like, like people are suggesting that in um, the Game of Thrones and Song by Fire universe, it's like um, being, being um, it's about like a question of agency and you have more agency in some situations being um, a person with a disability who was born, who was high born, as opposed to an able person uh, who's low born. Exactly. Um, the second thing was that we touched on this briefly, the, um, the idea of the disability superpower, which is a trope that is, it seems partly, I think, partly subverted in brand. The idea that, that that characters with disabilities are oftentimes given magical powers, so that's a common thing that we see from fiction. And and I think I that was something that kind of put me off about his arc at first. But I think that as you mentioned, he does have a lot of agency and he makes a lot of decisions that are like different kinds of compassionate and not compassionate. And he's not a straight superhero either. No, so sorry. even though he gets those powers Normally we'd see them become like a godlike or, you know, a, a virtue. It's a lot of times like they're put there, but it's not. Bran yeah, does Bran's some, not terrible. no, terrible. yeah, he does. And, and that's why I love George because they're all people. They're all complex people and they are not defined by one thing. Even if society wants them to. Society wants to define Tyrion that way. And Tyrion takes what they say and throws it back in their face. <laughs> and that's just, it's amazing. So you have a question, Nick? Uh, yeah, I was going to point about how you have uh, more physically disabled characters and more mentally disabled characters, but they, for the most part, seem to arrive at that or like a trauma point at that disability, and it, that seems to be what sparks the magic. Like you have Arya who goes through a lot of murder, and <laughs> and, and then she learns how or accidentally starts working. But then you also have Bran who falls from a window and becomes crippled, who then learns to war and get to have great dreams. Yeah, I think he has a good mix of being born with a disability and also through accidents. And and that's what gets me on a lot of literature, especially like Lord of the Rings, I, I point that out because I just, I don't understand how you can go on an epic quest and you're just a-okay. Like, I mean, yeah, they have, probably have some mental scarring from it, but, but I think George has a good mixture and I really do like how he just doesn't do physical. You're right, there's mental too. We have a lot of characters that have some mental component to them and he shows it in such a respectful way because there's so many negative stereotypes and it's like George steps back and he goes, no. You know, it's the same thing when people tell him you write women so well, how do you do it? And he went, well, I was always under the impression that they're people too. And that's just how he writes people. He writes all his characters, they're people. They're not just, they're not here to serve as a lesson, you know? Yes? I just wanted to say two quick things about like how far we've come. Um, at this point, it's difficult for me to separate the books from the show. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, no, I understand. Yes, but I think props are due to Dan and Dave for hiring for casting Peter English because even though he comes, you know, Terry comes to us visually constantly in the show, we don't. I don't at least think of him as it was that cool dude. It's like, oh, it's Terry, you know. Yeah. And he normalized. Like part of it is that Peter Dinklage is like a freaking handsome. Charming yeah, I've heard that criticism too. He's too handsome. Yeah. 